Well, hey guys, we just showed up at the job site. And uh, today, you guys, we're gonna have a pretty pretty cool video. We're gonna be planting some trees today. Now, you guys, I am uh, the camera guy, and I also do some marketing for a tree care company here, but I have never, ever planted a tree in my life. So I'm really looking forward to learning something today. I hope you guys are looking forward to learning something. I will say also that we have a drought situation going on right now. It's been you know 90 to 100 degrees. We haven't had any rain. And so I'm also very curious, You know, can we plant a tree in this heat? Will the tree survive? Uh, so let's find out and let's go plant some trees. We're here at a site that we we did some uh, removals last winter and in fact there were probably nine or or more black cherries uh, in this yard and they were kind of poor quality uh, we've got some examples of some of those in the neighboring yard and you know oftentimes in the in the game of trees you know the exciting athletic dangerous things are actually doing removals you know and, and killing things <laughs> technically and you know there's a lot more to arboriculture than just technically taking down trees and and so we're gonna be doing some different things on on the more positive side of arboriculture and, and one of the things is tree planting and so uh, you know I'm climbing trees today that I planted in the past and and that is the testimony to my age, but it's also a testimony to the renewable resource we have in arboriculture. And if you're running a tree company and, and just cutting down trees and maybe pruning a few and not thinking about planting, you're missing out on a major market. And so we do a lot of tree planting and here's a situation where we did a lot of tree removal and now we're gonna spruce up this entire yard with about nine nine tree additions into this yard. So almost one for one for taking out trees versus putting trees in. So this is gonna be an exciting day. Uh, we'll, we'll show you the different processes of how we do it. And thanks for listening. This is a pickaxe and it is your most trusted tool when uh, digging out a stump. And the reason we dig out stumps is because of this little thing right here. It's called a rock. And when you're grinding a stump, if you hit this thing, it not only will it dull your tool, but it'll also send it flying. And uh, we want to protect uh, the homeowners, we want to protect their property, and we don't want these things flying 50 miles an hour. In On this maple over here, we had we picked these up a few weeks ago, and we put them in our nursery, and we packed them kind of close together just for watering ease. And then the other day, I look up and I notice there's all these dead leaves. We've we've pulled off the dead leaves because it created kind of a micro environment, and there was some you know anthracnose or some other foliage disease that got in there. And you know, that's a little disconcerting to show up with a, a nice big tree. <laughs> There's all these dead leaves on it. So uh, we stripped those dead leaves off. But as you can see, the new, the new leaves are forming here. And this is gonna leaf out in the next couple of you know, days, few days here. And one of the things about the weather right now, we're in, we're in mid-June. And this is like mid-July. 
it's super dry. We've been, uh, we're probably close to nine inches down in rainfall. So, uh, yeah, this is a like a mid-July planting. And there's a lot of people that say, oh, you can't plant trees, you know, spring or fall, that's the best time. You know, if you if you baby the trees, you can plant them just about any time through the, through the growing season. And we've kind of got this odd phenomenon of mid-June when they should be all green and we're, we're super dry. So, um, but these are gonna be fine. We've got, as you can see by the landscape here, uh, some fairly meticulous homeowners that really care for their landscape. And they've got irrigation going out front and I, I think there's irrigation back here. Uh, if not, um, they've got some hoses and some sprinklers that they're moving around. Uh, so that I'm confident that these are gonna be well taken care of. Uh, and, and so at any rate, I wanted to point out that little bit of phenomenon that we had some uh, leaf diseases on the tree. And you can see some of the remaining dead leaves over here, but they're all beginning to bud out again. So all will be well in the end. All right, we're, uh, we're here. We're gonna be digging the holes first with an auger here. And you know, planting depth is a real important thing. I was just talking to the client about uh, some trees that were planted earlier and, and I'm gonna take a closer look at, at a swamp white oak that was planted over here that looks a little deep, like it was planted too deeply. And that's, that's the most common problem with, with tree planting is, is putting them in the ground too deep. And so, you know, we'll get the initial hole dug, but we do, a, we do a lot of measuring and ensuring that we got the depth of the hole right for the ball. And a lot of times we're shaving the top of our ball off down to the natural root flare of the tree, which is sometimes buried, you know, through the nursery process, the tree gets moved a few times and, and that root flare might be down in the dirt a ways. And if that's the case, you can have a girdling root get around the stem. If the stem's not in the ground, it can't get girdled. And you know, we as arborists, we often see the end result of a, of a poor planting in you know, 25 years when we're taking that tree out prematurely because it was put in the ground uh, incorrectly. And so we're gonna take great care to get our trees planted at a proper depth. And as a general rule, planting too high is far superior than planting too deep. And so I'd rather see a tree on a mound than a tree deeply in the ground and have everything look flat. Uh, if the tree looks like a telephone pole going into the ground, it's probably planted too deeply. We should see that root flare a little bit. Guys, we might have a serious problem. Kevin is back there and he's digging all these holes to plant the trees and this ground is like, it's so dry. I mean, it's like clay. I don't even know if we can plant a tree here. This could be a big problem. Hey, Kevin, could you come here a minute? Like, look at this. Yeah, this is like concrete. It's, uh, it's super hard. You can see if, you, if you've seen some of the, the augering, it's, it's just like augering with a, a little mini loader is way different than a big loader. <laughs> it just, it throws you around. That, that thing can come out of the hole and, and hit your tree if you got your tree too close. So it's kind of like short little strokes that you try to do uh, to get it started and get a hole uh, established so you can start drilling down. But this is, this is just hard drilling the whole way. It's like we're drilling through, you know, sandstone, but it's actually just dry clay. You know, you can see this, it looks like a rock, but it, it's just a piece of clay that's, that's just hard. And that's a phenomenon of clay when it's wet it's super pliable, obviously. You make clay pots and different things out of it. And it, it can be at risk of compaction when it's wet. It can get smooshed down. All the air pockets can be driven out of it. You know, technically, 50% of the, the soil that we're standing on is airspace. You would never think it looking at it. But there's all kinds of structure in the soil, uh, different sized particles. And in between those different sized particles, there's airspace. And that airspace is useful for you know, holding water and holding air because oxygen is, is a vital part of, of tree survival. Uh, having oxygen in the soil is very important. If, if this is all compacted, uh, 
that can create a, a significant problem for the tree. Plus that pore space is where the roots push into and occupy. You know, if there's no space for the roots to occupy, they're just gonna sit in a little ball here where we put them. And so, uh, you know, one good thing about all these different size pieces that we're getting with the augering is that when we put this back in, we're gonna have some natural pore space uh, that's, that's put back into the soil. And so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, the other significant thing with this being clay, underneath here, I know this by different construction sites I've seen around here, there, there's sandstone, you know, and gravel. And so there's gravel pits around here. And so underneath this heavy clay is, is a coarse uh, bedrock. And water does not flow from fine materials like clay. This is a very fine, if it's wet, it's gonna be slimy. That's because it's super fine. And fine soils do not let go of water until they're saturated. And, and they don't drip into the, the more coarse soil until they're fully saturated. So clay soil requires a lot of evaporation to keep it at a good moisture level. If, if it's totally saturated, that's gonna be what's called anaerobic. It's gonna you know, generate a lot of bacteria. And if you, if you get a hold of a bunch of anaerobic soil in your hand, you're gonna be like, yuck, this smells like the bottom of a swamp. Uh, and that's the bacteria that you smell. And so uh, something the, the client's gonna to have to be concerned with is overwatering these trees. I know it looks like, how could you overwater this? But you get this wet and it's not getting dry very quickly. And so uh, overwatering is gonna be an issue. In a site not far from here, uh, a week ago, we pulled the tree out of the ground, there's water in the bottom of the hole. And it was this exact scenario. So you can go from very dry to saturated, soppy wet very quickly with clay. Uh, so that's kind of the, some of the problems we're dealing with today. And you can kind of see how it's throwing my, my auger around on me just because it's so hard and dry. But now we'll, we'll get somebody over here and start prepping this hole uh, for this first tree. And we, I've got a much bigger hole than the ball, so we're gonna have to make sure our depth is correct on this and getting it shallower than I actually have it now. But we'll get that taken care of. Uh, so what we're doing right now is we're getting ready to plant our very first tree for the day. Um, we're measuring the tree here so that we, we know that we have the hole the correct size. Then we're going to add some biochar and biochar is basically a soil enhancer. And then we're going to put some mulch around the tree. So here we go. Let's plant our very first tree of the day. just a basket that's mostly on the bottom uh, it is possible to get the entire basket off if, like on the bigger baskets you can take the bottom off first and then get it in the hole and then take the sides off it's not really necessary to get the bottom off uh, the main problem with the basket is it if it's way up here on a large growing tree it could grow into it and actually create a girdling issue uh, but roots don't really girdle in the basket. They grow around the basket. Uh, there's been studies that show that that's the case. But it's very important to get it away from the top of the tree. So, but this has a pretty low profile basket already. Now this is a hor uh, Fort McNair horse chestnut. And it's a grafted, it's grafted on a different root. So this is probably a, a common horse chestnut root and they've grafted the, the hybrid off of it. Uh, this has a nice red flower, uh, so it's kind of cool. But we'll want to, looks like the flare is down in the ball a little bit. So we may actually want to raise this up a little bit. Okay. Put a little bit more biochar around the edge here. We put biochar in here to uh, charcoal 
is something that it's a pure carbon so fine nutrients attached to carbon before they enter the tree and so we put a little uh, biochar which is fortified carbon if you just put charcoal down it would actually pull nutrients away from the tree initially so ours is fortified and uh, it's a really good thing to put in a new plant very important to get the burlap any burlap you leave you have to have down underneath the soil because it'll act as a wick that it kind of wicks soil up and out or wick, wicks water up and out of the soil it's actually really good that we're dry right now if you're planting in clay when it's really wet it's easy to really smooth up the sides it's almost like a glazed bowl like you're making a clay pot and, and so then water will hold in that pot so it's good that we've got a dry clay and then we can water it once we get it in the ground okay so I was digging this out <clears throat> And I found like burlap right on top of the ball. Uh, you can see, so they, they just stuck this. This of course isn't our work. <laughs> this is another landscape company that did the whole neighborhood. And you know, this was, fortunately they planted this a little high so I can do a little bit of mitigation. But this, this burlap's right up around the trunk, there's still the twine uh, that, that's fortunately breaking down, but it doesn't always break down, all wrapped around the trunk. Um, kind of pathetic <laughs> to be friendly about it. But So I'm going to dig out the other ones that are around here. There are three others that they planted. I'll take a look at those. Look at this. This, this will act as a wicking mechanism, this, this burlap. And it will drain the tree of valuable water by creating a wick, just like a candle wick in a kerosene um, jar. So they've really made this difficult to... It's got some fine roots going here. We definitely need to water this tree. But the stem is kind of in the ground, and then these fine roots can turn into bigger roots, and they can wrap around that trunk. that it kind of kind of set it free. So I'm gonna shave this a little bit more. Wow. Incredible. You know, so in this case it was breaking down. But they don't always break down in time, and the tree might have an early death. So we'll add some of our mulch to that. But yeah, so we, uh, we kind of just saved that tree. All right, guys, so we just left the crew on the job site. You think they're going to do good? Yeah, I think they'll do good. They'll do good without. You think they'll be able to do good without me there? I know I'm a pretty well, important part of the. They're gonna do better than I'm gonna do. Part of the job there. To a road closed. Oh. Do you know? Do you know where you're going around I, here? I really don't. Well, uh, anyways, guys, Kevin is gonna try to get out of here. Oh, look, it's Autumn Blaze Trail. Didn't we just plan, plant an Autumn Blaze? No, we did not. We did not plant, plant an Autumn, autumn Blaze. blaze. Okay. That, we never plant Autumn Blaze. But its cousin Sienna Glen and its other cousin Celebration Maple are gone. Oh. So we planted a Sienna Glen and a Celebration Maple, but not an Autumn Blaze. Why don't we plant Autumn Blaze trees? Their structure is 
simply horrible. They're horrible really prone to, to multi stems, and uh, they, they happen to have the most consistent fall color, though. So you know, people buy expensive cars they buy them because the they, color, yeah. they're a nice color, you know, and then they have a bunch of repairs. But uh, that's kind of like the Autumn Blaze. It's it's the pretty uh, stepchild of the the Fremonti hybrid maples and it has the worst structure and so if if you look at DeForest this is DeForest that we're in if you look at this city from a distance which you can because it's kind of on a prairie in the fall you can just see hundreds and hundreds of autumn blaze maples all throughout the town that is work security for us <laughs> because they all need pruning in a drastic way and many of them will fall apart in, in storms and, and produce work for us in the future. So in that regard, I'm not a, uh, I'm not opposed to the autumn blaze, but we're not gonna propagate those problems by planting them. So we're gonna look down the road to a better future with some of its more favorable cousins. Well, I had no idea we were gonna do a half a video about bashing the autumn blaze <laughs> maple yeah. tree. But anyways, guys, right now we are, the crew is back working on the job, planting trees. And it is so hard to film these videos when we have like big machines going and we're trying to talk and I have to keep telling people to turn the machines off and they don't want to turn the machines off because they got to get done with the job too. And so we're going to look at buying some uh, some better microphones, maybe some like external microphones and stuff and I'll just see what we can come up with. Here we go. Kevin look at that. There you go. Oh, look how crisp it looks. Upgraded that camera. <laughs> camera upgrade. Does this look like clearer picture now? Was there like big like wood chips stuck in the lens or anything? <laughs> no, I didn't see that any. Thank you. All right, we appreciate you. Thank Have you. a great day. Yep. Hi. Hi. All right, guys. I love shopping with Kevin. I just got a massive upgrade on my camera. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm dying of thirst. Let's go get some water, yeah. and then let's go check out the job. Chick-fil-A! 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 How was it? Hello. Hi, Hi. Good. All right, you know what you're getting. Um, you getting a name for the order? Um, Kevin? For Kevin? Okay. That'd be my name. Yeah, I'm Justin, actually. All right. I'm sorry, what was it? I'll, I'll do a number one. Yeah. Even like when the weather's horrible and they're standing out there in like freezing rain and stuff, Chick-fil-A people are still so nice. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, they got the politeness down. So here's the finished product. We put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine trees, there were three oaks out here at the time that we came. All the right. trees are going in. The clients are super happy. They love them. Cool. Really some beautiful yards, some awesome trees. Um, what do you always say about planting trees? The best time to plant was 20 years ago. Next best time is today. There you go.